Good evening. This is CTV News for Wednesday, September 20th. I'm Patricia Vallone. And I'm Karen Campbell. Thanks for joining us tonight. We begin tonight in College Park, where police are notifying residents about some disturbing incidents. On three occasions, women have reported strangers entering their homes in the middle of the night. All of the incidents happened overnight in the 4500 block of Guilford Road. The first happened on September 9th, the other two on September 16th. Investigators say one victim says she was touched inappropriately. The others reported screaming when they saw the person prompting him to flee. Police say in all of the incidents, the stranger entered through an unlocked door or window. So we, we are seeing that as a uh, trend that this, uh, in th these cases, uh, open windows, open doors are being utilized. So anyone in the area, we understand that, you know, we are approaching our more seasonably uh, nice fall weather, but especially at night or when you're not at home, uh, to make sure that you are securing your doors uh, and your windows uh, to make it so that someone can't uh, so easily come into your residence. We always do lock our yeah, door, no. but now we are keeping our windows shutter down, you know. I don't want to, I don't want that guy to look into my house when it's night or, you know. Anyone with information about the incidents are asked to call police. Drivers and safety leaders want speed cameras in Washington, D.C. to be reviewed. A study by AAA Mid-Atlantic found that Marylanders pay more for traffic camera fines in the district than Virginians and D.C. residents. Ag agency representatives question whether or not the cameras are used for safety or are they speed traps to make a profit. Of all the speed cameras in the city, 22 of them brought in more than a million dollars apiece. John Townsend with AAA Mid-Atlantic says revenue generated from speed cameras in Washington, D.C. are at a record high. More Maryland drivers are footing the bill. Most of these cameras are in transition zones, meaning speed transition zones, where you're going from one lower speed to a higher speed. They're calling them speed traps. This camera along South Dakota Avenue leads drivers out of D.C. and onto an exit ramp into Maryland. It dished out $7.2 million in revenue. Towson says during that time there were no signs alerting drivers of a camera. We think that camera should have a bona fide and legitimate traffic safety need and it should make roadways safer. D.C. Councilwoman Mary Che is asking the D.C. Department of Transportation for a review. They should not be placed on high-speed roadways that have no nexus or connection to safety, but are simply there to generate revenue. Townsend says four of the most lucrative cameras are located on 295 or an exit ramp adjacent to 295. Those produced $25 million in revenue in 2016. Well, drivers in Prince George's County could expect major delays near Branch Avenue tonight. Road crews will be working on northbound and southbound lanes between 10 p.m. and 4 a.m. Now, crews expect single lane closures of up to 15 minutes between Morse Road and Brandywine Road. Well, some not so good news tonight from Maryland's Board of Revenue Estimates. The four member panel released its projections for the current fiscal year and the numbers are down $53 million. The board also unveiled its first official estimates for fiscal year 2019. Again, those numbers are down by $74 million. Now, the board says reasons include weaker than anticipated sales revenue, the changing buying we habits, and more online purchases. Slow the most tentative economic recovery of our lifetimes. And as I've said in the past, I think it would be imprudent to expect a return to pre-recessionary patterns of economic expansion. To be prepared for the fiscal uncertainties of the future, I believe the fiscal policymakers need to consider this rate of growth in our revenues as the new normal. And I would encourage my fellow state leaders to adopt this approach when making spending and fiscal policy decisions in the months ahead. Now, on the upside, Comptroller Peter Franchot says Maryland just closed the books on fiscal year 2017 with $90 million above the original projections. Now, the Prince George's Board of Education approves a resolution in support of immigrant students and their families. The resolution expresses a commitment to protecting students' rights and continuing partnerships with community organizations that provide resources for families facing deportation. The board is also directing the CEO to create a countywide rapid response team 
That team would address issues impacting DACA students who were brought to the U.S. at a young age and are currently dealing with efforts to dismantle the protective immigration policy. Public information officers from around the region are in Capitol Heights this week for some special training under FEMA. Veteran PIO Mark Brady of Prince George's County led some of the sessions along with his Montgomery County counterparts. Representatives from public safety, health care, schools and municipalities are taking part in classes which focus on many areas including how to handle natural disasters. Uh, three classes in four days. Uh, we've got about 100 people or so over the course of the day are going through the classwork, so uh, it's very exciting. We're getting a lot of good feedback mm -hmm. and uh, a lot of good discussion. Obviously, the public information officers in this area do have a lot of experience mm -hmm. and a lot to offer for all of us. And the sessions go throughout Friday.